Just like titles in a bookshop are divided into fiction and non-fiction, we can communicate along a spectrum ranging from colorful storytelling to stating plain facts. When fiction and non-fiction speak to us, they serve opposing purposes. To understand this difference, let's examine the definition and then a famous example of a classic tragedy. The tragedy is a type of dramatic work in which the main character experiences a downfall due to circumstances that are beyond their control. Traditionally, the intention of tragedy is to invoke an accompanying catharsis, a pain that awakens pleasure. Now, the fiction. Once upon a time, a boy was born to the king and queen of Thebes. The boy's name was Oedipus. Soon after his birth, a prophet warned the king that the boy would grow up to kill his father and marry his mother. To avoid this catastrophe, the king ordered one of his servants to kill the baby. But the servant couldn't do it and left the innocent child with a shepherd. The shepherd brought the boy to the king of Corinth, who raised him as his own. When Oedipus grew to be a man, a prophet told him his destiny. Not knowing that he had been adopted, Oedipus left Corinth to run away from his misfortune. On his way to Thebes, he met an old man with his servants. The two got into a fight and Oedipus killed them all. When Oedipus arrived in Thebes, he encountered the evil Sphinx that menaced the city. After Oedipus solved the Sphinx's riddle, it killed itself. To celebrate this victory, Oedipus was named the new king of Thebes and given the current queen as his bride, for the former king had mysteriously been killed. Years later, after they had four children, plagues began to destroy the city. Oedipus tried to find out the reason for this misfortune when he heard rumors that Thebes would be doomed until the day that the murderer of the former king was punished. Oedipus first tried to find the villain and then began to understand what had actually happened. When he realized that he had killed his father and made love to his mother, he blinded himself as he could not bear to see the children he had fathered. Now, what do you think about the two examples and how do the two help you understand a tragedy? The story appears real and feels alive you can experience it, sense it emotionally, see it with your imagination. And because this can be exciting, it is recorded in your brain, changes your mind, and will be remembered for a long time. But there is a downside. Stories are so powerful, you may start to think that they are more common than they are, and you become biased. This effect is also known as the law of small numbers which is why we also need facts. Facts are abstract and boring. Reading non-fiction is not exciting and is hence not easily recorded in your memory. In fact, a mere month after reading an entire book, most of us remember not more than one single idea. And because facts are weak and they compete for attention with stories that are powerful, they hardly ever change your mind. However, there is one thing they do well. Nonfiction provides our mind a theory, a heuristic, and a framework that allows us to make assumptions and generalize. Put them on a spectrum, and you'll find high retention versus low retention, easy reading versus hard studying, and a subjective perspective versus objectivity. For their polarizing nature, smart educators often combine the two. Just as the quote goes, when one man dies, it's a tragedy, and when a million die, it's statistics. To better understand the true nature of war, we need to consider both. What do you think? What will you learn from this video? Possibly a good mix of both worlds. Share your thoughts and your favorite way to grasp complex topics in the comments below. If you like how we explain complicated ideas in simple cartoon animation, you can support us. Visit patreon.com sprouts. Just visit us, 
learn how it works and what's in it for you. We hope to see you there. And if you are a parent or educator, check out our website, SproutSchools.com. There you can find this and other video lessons, additional resources and classroom activities. If you found this helpful, check out our other videos and subscribe. If you want to support our work, join us on patreon.com sprouts. For more information and additional content, visit sproutschools.com.